caught up in your emotions. You're all praise to Yahweh, Hashem, Yom Shabbat, Hashem, Kakodash. I'm not going to make this too long. This is basically a gem that's quick hit. And I looked at the word emotion. And there's two definitions. If we go to Google's dictionary, con dictionary. Uh, definition one. A I like the second one. A natural instinct instinctive state of mind deriving from one's circumstances, mood, or relationship with others. She was attempting to control her emotions. In second definition, which I like this one better, instinctive or intuitive feeling as distinguished from reasoning or knowledge. And it says here, let me highlight this. It says responses have to be based on historical insight, not simply on emotion. Let me read this again instinctive or intuitive feeling as distinguished from reasoning, reasoning or knowledge. Responses have to be based on historical insight, not simply on emotion. Let me look up the word reasoning and then I'm gonna look up the word knowledge. Reasoning, the action of thinking about something in a logical, sensible way, which is opposite of emotions. Christians get caught up in their emotions. Anybody that's following vocab, any Jake that's following Christianity that came across a video dealing with Israel, mainly the one West Westers, and they and they come against it. They're caught up in their emotions. They haven't grown. He explained the reasoning behind his decision at a media conference. You know what what uh, this administration is doing? He's playing on people's emotion. That's why. You got that now they talk, you know what they're talking about now? They're talking about gas prices. This is nothing. Four dollars, four fifty, five dollars. They said gas prices, don't be surprised if gas prices go goes up to seven dollars, seven dollars plus. So take advantage of the bargain on gas. And then people are gonna get caught up in their emotions over that. People get caught up in their emotions over the price of food, the price of everything. The stock of, what is it, BJ's, Target, I believe Amazon. I mean, this, this, the, this news, you know, the news of uh, the times, of this time, the, of this time we're in, excuse me, I'm mumbling. Everything's being getting being affected by what they call inflation, which is one step closer to hyperinflation, where prices just shoot up. You know, by you know, in the morning, you might get something that costs a certain price. That afternoon, it might be twenty five percent more. That evening, it may be. 50% more, the next morning it might be 50% more, uh, the, the evening it might be another 20% more, that's hyperinflation. 
and people don't understand how the money system works, how systems work. So what do they do? They get emotional. They said the action of thinking about something in a logical, sensible way. I'm going to get to where I'm going to get to, why I'm going through all of this. Like these dumbass Christians that they'll, you know, it was a video I was watching that was put up by the uh, elder of Baltimore, uh, Karatazaba about this woman that left, was a part of, Israel, part of Israelism, and then she left. And she sound like, you know, she, basically she's following um, vocab. Vocab is the Pied Piper of that fake ass Christianity. And this is not for women. You know, you come into Israel, don't be bringing your woman into Israel, man, your children. You just get it, you get it. And maybe eventually, you know, you, you'll give it to your family. Your family might not accept it. I never told any woman I dealt with, I never told them I was an Israelite, is that dirt? Let's deal with logical. When you read the scriptures, you got to apply logic, not emotion. Emotions. Logical. Of or according to the rules of logic or formal argument. Characterized by or capable of clear, sound reasoning, characterized by or capable of clear, sound reasoning. I like that word sound, that's in the scriptures. of an action, development, decision, etc., et Nat natural or sensible given the circumstances. What does logical mean in a person? Reasoning or cap capable of reasoning in a clear and consistent manner. Very logical person. Adjective. Is it better to be emotional or logical? In many ways, logic is better than emotions. The more you can think critically and objectively about a decision before you make it, the more likely the decision will be the best for you. The less you are, the less you are drive only I guess that's driven only, supposed to be driven only, by emotion and instinct, the fewer impulsive or irrational decisions you should make. So now let's look up the word sound in the scriptures. I want to go to the New Testament.
It's nice. Pro, uh, let me read this. Proverbs 2, verse 7. He, he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Sound wisdom, a sound heart. Let's look up the word sound. Sound in the Hebrew. If you don't apply logic when you go into the scriptures, you're basically a Christian, an emotional Christian, and a, and a, a Christian filled with emotions. The vocab, he's filled with emotions. He does things based upon emotions. Wisdom, sound knowledge, success, sound, or efficient wisdom, abiding success, sound of efficient wisdom, abiding success of the effect of sound wisdom. Let's come back. I know you're wondering, what am I getting? What are, you, what are you getting at? Don't get emotional. Don't get emotional. Where's the patience and the faith of the saints? That guy's a, a, some individual that comes into Israel and he loses it and he goes out and shoots up a lot of people. He got caught up in his emotion. He, he really wasn't a part of the elect at all. You can't have emotional people around you, man. It caught, they'll cause you to get hurt or killed. Oh, well, that's in war. In the law, laws of Israel, if you go to war, against the enemy, another nation. And you have a man that's afraid he doesn't have to go to war. Israelite doesn't have to fight in a war if he has fear because he would, that fear would, is contagious and make the other men fearful. I believe Gad did that too. If you didn't want to go out to war, you didn't have to because it created, you force a fearful man into war other men around them, they're going to become fair too. They're going to say, yeah, he makes a lot of sense, man. I don't want to die. Caught up in his emotions. So there's, that's an actual uh, uh, law. An Israelite man does not have to go out to war if he doesn't want to, if he has fear in his heart. Okay, let's deal with this one. First Timothy's, is this First Timothy's? I'm sorry, this is Titus, I believe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it is Timothy, First Timothy's. First Timothy's one verse 10. For whoremongers, what's a whoremonger? A whoremonger is a pimp. Monger means to, to sell, sell a whore. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for man stealers, uh oh, what is a man stealer? For liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, sound doctrine. Second Timothy one verse seven, for the most high have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power 
and of love and of a sound mind. Let's look up the word sound. A person that's not sound, is caught up in his emotions, is basically a crazy person. He just knows how to hide it, hide it well. I want to look up the word sound. Charles G, 4995, Oprani Smas. Oprani You heard it? And admonishing, and admonishing, and admonishing, or calling to soundness of mind, to moderation and self-control, self-control, moderation. Second Timothy one verse thirteen, hold fast the form of sound words. You know, not emotional words, words that make sense, theories that make sense, that are logical, which thou has heard of me in faith and love, which is in Hamashayak Yahawashai. Let me say this. It actually says Christ Jesus, right? Any Israelite that's saying Mosai and Christ bless or Jesus, you would run, you run, run from them. That's clearly caught up in your emotions. That's a, that's a Christian with a Hebrew Israelite twist. And what I'm getting at is uh, this this guy, uh, uh, Bishop Nathaniel, he's caught up in his emotions. He's caught up in his emotions. That's why, but 20 years ago, him and uh, Ben of the of the uh, Banyamian did a of the uh, HODC uh, did a video about a two hour long video where he goes into into the dictionary, goes into the Hebrew, opens up the, the, the uh, Torah, the, the Tanakh, you know, and spends two hours proving to you, scripture say, prove all things and hold fast to that, which is good, that the Lord's name is not Jesus, the Most High's name is not God or Jehovah, it's Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. But now he has his congregation, which they're filled up with emotion, emotions, you know, calling on Jesus the Christ. Now, when he started getting better, what did he do? He mentioned Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. And then he went back to calling on Jesus the Christ. And then the name, if you were, if you were truly sincere about calling on the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, you would change, completely change the name from IUIC to IUI. Why? Deceived to the why. But you're caught up in your emotions. And people are saying you look like you're getting sick again. There's no way. I, I have a sound mind. I have a mind of logic. I check checks things out. If I was a part of that group, I wouldn't be a part of that group long anyway, but if me watching the Hebrew Israelite videos of one West is whatever, and I had to choose, I said, well, let me go to IUIC, you know, I like the marches, the garments all, you know, they all wear the same, the uniform, I mean, that means uniform, which doesn't mean you have the truth. Hell, if that's the case, then the, the nation of Is Islam has the truth because they all, and I know that's, you want to talk about emotions, those people are full of, full of emotion. They're emotional over their leader. They, 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 that's a church organization with a, 
with an Islamic twist to it. That's all it is. People like uniformity. People like uniformity. I mean, there's a lot of scriptures on the word sound in the New Testament. Titus 2 verse 1, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. If, if the IUIC is such a great organization, then I would think that most members of the GMS would defect and go to the IUIC. Ain't, no, ain't nobody going, ain't nobody from the, G, uh, the GMS going to the IUIC. Now, if, if there's somebody in the GMS that goes to the IUIC, I, get, I bet you that guy's a weak, a weak link in the camp. He probably knew. So you go into that, you follow this guy, you, you, your logic goes out the window. Logic goes out the window. He says something, you people just follow it. Whatever he says, however mad it, bad it sounds, or crazy, or illogical it sounds, you just accept it because the great God, Bishop Nathaniel, said it. Years back, we did videos on the Karagma, and he did counter videos. Him and that demon. General Johanna, they did counter videos and they sound the same. They, they, they sound like they're reading from a script. The Karagma is Christianity and an embargo. And that's what, that's what Bishop Nate said. General Johanna said it first. And guys, just follow it. Not using, not applying logic. Let me say this to you men in GMS that get emotional. We ain't dealing with emotional men. We ain't dealing with emotional men. If you are filled up in emotions, get the fuck out of here, man. Get the fuck out of here. In my, in my um, Carnello voice. Get the fuck out of here. We don't need you. If you're caught up in your emotions, we don't need you, man. If you're not consistent and coming out to the camp, you can... Get the fuck out of here. If you're not doing videos, then you're not of, most likely you're not of the elect. If you can't see that the prophecies are coming to pass, popping off like popcorn, you're not one of the elect. The most I, the most I could open your eyes and shut your, and, sh and shut your eyes, meaning your spiritual eyes. Anyway, I said, but speak. But speak, Titus 2, verse 1, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Now, I mind you, most of what Bishop Nathaniel says is sound doctrine. But you know what it is? He's, he mastered the art of recurg regurgitating things that he learned from myself and the seven. But then he added new things, certain things that the that the seven didn't teach him, he wings it. They never really went into the, the karagma. They, they, you know what they said? Oh, the, oh, the karagma is, is uh, in your right hand, meaning you fight for Esau. If it's in your, if it's in your, your forehead, that means you think for Esau. And that's all they give, all they give you. Now, the receipts are sky high. The, rec the receipts are taller than the mountain as far as the karagma is concerned. The evidence is overwhelming. Over That's why most Edomites can get it because you know what? Most Edomites, they deal with logic. The children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light, meaning they're more... Oh, let me look up the word wiser. Hold up, hold up. The children of this world the children of 
This, that's all I should put in. It's in Luke. Okay, Luke, Luke 16, verse 8. Uh, Luke, I'm sorry, Luke 16, verse 8. And the Lord commanded the unjust steward because he had done wisely for the children of this world are world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. The children of light are the Israelites starting with the elect. The children of this world is anything out of that. You know, the, the, the two-thirds Esau. That's why a lot of Edomites they'll say, yep, that's that's it. Yep. The, the religious, you know, the, the, the paragma is the uh, MOTB. Oh, where the hell is the cursor? So here we go. Now what I want to do is I want to click on this. I want, to, I want to look up the word wiser. Not riser, but wiser. Riser is not wiser. Wiser. If you're wise, the next man is wiser. Intelligent. The children of this world are more intelligent than the children of light. Prudent, smart, i.e., mindful of one's interests. They apply logic, sound doctrine, indicates rather intelligence or mental. Acquirement sagacious, meaning smart, thoughtful, not caught up in their emotions like a goddamn Christian, discreet, implying a cautious character, meaning somebody says something, you check it out. There's a saying, I think it's uh, trust and verify. Like if somebody tells you something, this, that, and the third, you might trust the person, but you know what? You go ahead and verify it. Denotes practical skill or acumen. Let's look up the word acumen. In order for you to understand the scriptures, you must apply a thing called acumen. Definition. Acumen, the ability to make good judgments and quick decisions, typically in a particular domain. Let me read that again. Acumen, the ability to make good judgments and quick decisions, typically in a particular domain. What does it mean to, what does it mean by acumen? Let's see what this says. Keenness. Wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Meaning, meaning you have to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Another name for a serpent is a dragon. A dragon is known for his keenness. Keenness and depth of perception, discernment or discrimination, especially in practical matters. Let me see, what is a synonym for acumen? 
Let's see what that says. This is why some people can't get, get this truth, or some people come into it, to this because they begin to apply acumen, intelligence, their sound in mind, but then they fall off. I'll give you the example of Patak. He was the first major fall off from out of Chicago. He was the head of Chicago. He said, the elders are going off on a particular scripture. I forget, I believe it was Revelation 9. It's not important. And he said, it means that and it doesn't mean this. And I'm not budging. So you know we told him? He said, boom, goodbye, you're out. Then the guy realized he wasn't getting no attention and he tried to get back in. But he tried to get back in through a back door, which was GMS Dallas, in which, you know, they said, "No, nah, I can't. I can't get through through, the, through them apostles. They ain't here. They ain't budging. They ain't hearing shit from me." But let me see if I can. They ain't nigga, you ain't ain't no motherfucking way you getting in. You got to get in through the leadership, man. So he tried to Patak tried to get in. Do, do Dallas, and we caught wind of it, and we cursed Dallas out, fi- realizing that the only guy that was really with it was uh, Element. That Element, he fell off. He got caught up in his emotions, and he fell off. Brother was cool, Mr. Brother. Shalom to you, brother. I hope you're doing well. You know, and I hope the Most High, you know, have mercy on you and raise you back up. And, and, I, and, and I said that out of emotions. I got emotional just now. I just got emotional, you know? You cool with somebody, you hope they make it. That's emotional. Now, if they don't make it, you gotta think, you gotta use your, your logical side and say, well, he didn't make it because he wasn't of the elect. It says some common, some common synonyms of acumen are discernment, meaning you don't just get, like in the church, you don't just get Niggas in the church, niggas in the church. Yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, the baby Jesus. Praise the Lord. Oh, how Lord have mercy. Oh, praise break. Praise break. Niggas tap dancing, doing backflips and shit. And you know what? We hate them niggas. We, we want the most out of kill them motherfuckers, man. Because that shit is a fucking embarrassment. Anytime you make a movie dealing with a black church, it's always a comedy. It's always, a, anytime there's a scene in a movie in the church, it's, it's a comedy. It's a comedy. They don't learn shit. They don't know nothing about, I've been in the church and I've been in the, no, they don't even say church right. They say church. Brother, I've been a deacon in the church for the last 70 years. And I read the Bible cover to cover a hundred times. You ask my basic question, the book of Obadiah, is that in the Old Testament or the New Testament? No, that's in the Quran. That ain't in the Bible. The book of Habakkuk. Uh, is that in the New Testament or in the Old Testament? Well, let me, I got to get back into my Bible. But he read it a hundred fucking times. The, look, the Christian church, the black Christian church, church is the biggest joke going. It's the biggest joke going. And the Most High is going to kill more of his people than he's going to save. He ain't bringing them niggas in, in the kingdom. He ain't bringing them niggas. He ain't bringing them Baptists with their fucking Friday fish, catfish fry Fridays. He's going to kill them. And this nigga Nate was close to death. And the most I raised him back up and he went back to court. He turned into a motherfucking emotional Christian again. Oh, you niggas are going to get emotional when they raise that price to $7 a gallon. When a damn pack of chicken that was ten dollars now costs you thirty five dollars, oh, you gonna be you gonna be hitting them. And you know what? When you go and and hit them and and uh, you know hit them stores and just steal shit, you know what the stores are gonna do? They gonna close, and you ain't gonna have nothing to eat. It's gonna be like Africa. Richard Price said that. What you gonna steal? There ain't nothing to steal. 
all these supermarkets and, the, and that tops supermarket up there in Buffalo, they said it's closed down. Well, well, wait a minute, just clean up the blood and let people come back in. They close that shit down. So now people got to go the next uh, supermarket. They got to go two miles out. A lot of them Jakes ain't got no cars, man. You tell me we're not under the curses. It says some common uh, synonyms of acumen. You got to when you read this, when you open up the scriptures, take that fucking emotional hat off. And put your logical hat on. Put your acumen hat on. You cannot understand the scriptures if you're caught up in your emotions. It says comes uh, some some com some common syn synonyms of acumen are discernment, discrimination, insight, penetration, and perception. Perception, discernment, discrimination, 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 insight, penetration, and perception. While all these words mean a power to see what is not evident to the what average mind. At best, at best, Bishop Nathaniel has an average mind. Somebody said, he's the smartest man on the planet. No, he's a master uh, regurgitator. A cumin applies characteristic penetration combined with keen practical judgment. And the churches don't do that, man. Churches don't do that. Anyway, I'm getting ready to close. Let me go to that video. Bear with me for a minute. Oh, this video right here, the elder put up some bone-headed, bare-headed black woman that was married to some guy that became the Israelite, and she didn't, she wasn't having it. And I'm trying to find uh, the. Uh, bear me for a minute, please. If there's anybody in GMS that's emotional about the scriptures, they can't see certain things, please leave. Don't, don't even tell us that to leave. Just fucking don't come back. Don't come around. Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. what you say? Hit the road, Jack. <laughs> you got you to gotta apply a little comedy relief levity always has its place and um ray charles had the 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 ray lets you can become a a ray let if you let ray now you figure out what i'm trying to say when he when he did that song he was he was popping all of them and they were jealous of each other so they were singing with emotion because they was thinking about the games that Ray Charles was playing on them so when they were singing it they were feel, they were feeling they were like you know get the fuck out of here get the fuck out of here Canelo Canelo anyway okay this is a video this video inspired me to do the video I'm doing now I'm a little long winded right here 
It says, so what is a measurable age in ancient Israel? Elder Bishop Nathaniel, do you even know? And the answer is no. He doesn't know because he's caught up in his emotions. So he says here, let me, let me uh, cue it for you. Bear with me for a minute. You, you can tell he's emotional because he's, his voice goes up a couple of octaves. You can tell him you got at 12 years old. He, he got, and and they, they're feeling their emotions. The, the congregation, they're feeling his emotion. They're not, they're not searching. They're not trusting and verifying. And, and he doesn't understand things because he doesn't go into the Hebrew, which 20 years ago, remember, he did a, a, a hour, two hour long video with Bun Yum Yum going into the, now, now let's go into the Hebrew and let's open up the Torah and let's come to this book and let's go to the Bible dictionary. The man went down. So let's listen, listen up, listen up, listen up. Name of the video in your second year. Let me open this up. IUIC Sabbath evening class following unworthy leaders. Now, now their Sabbath is based upon a Friday sundown and Saturday sundown, which they got that from the uh, the small hats. Their new moon is based upon the new moon. When you see the new moon, that's when you see the full moon, that's the new moon which is no, a scholar will laugh this man to scorn. And there's one, one precept that kills that. And it's in the Apocrypha. There's one precept that kills that. The new moon is when the, you, you don't see anything. You see a little, a, um, a sliver, sliver of light, a little crescent, or let's say invisible. You don't see that. That's the new moon. That's the new moon. So let's, let's, you can hear the emotions coming out of his voice. Now, why would he bring this topic up? This is an old topic. He got caught up in his emotions. He probably had a bad peanut butter and jelly sandwich and had a dream about us teaching it and got mad and got all, got out, got stuck. This is an old, this is an old issue, you know? So let, let's listen, let's listen, let's listen. Then I'm gonna close. Okay, so that you condemn yourself. The Lord ain't dealing with you. Let's listen to that again. You know what he's mad at? He's mad at the fact that where are these GMS men? They should, they should. We got these lovely garments. You can march with a thousand other men. What's, what's up with the men of GMS? They should be coming to me. The men that are, that are under um, the Sakari, they should be coming with me. The men under General Yohanna, they should, that's what he, he's in his motion. He's about numbers, man. He's about numbers. Now, remember what happened with David with the whole number counting thing. So he he's he's truly caught up in his emotions. Let's listen to let's listen. Let's listen. Let's listen. He's not hearing wisdom. He's not being logical. He's not a, 
or applying ac acumen. He just said GMS, you know, everybody knows who he's talking about. So he, he plays on their emotions. He plays on their feeble minds. And this is the black Jim Jones. There's a black Jim Jones right there. If this man brings out some Kool-Aid and tell you to drink it, you, you, know, you know what's up. And by the way, that's that's bearing false witness. Well, he well he said talking about it. We never said rape them at twelve. Make sure they're twelve. If they're thirteen, they're not they're not ready beyond ripe. You know, we never said that. Go back to and the, and the videos up there. A discussion with GMS, polite and discuss the discussion, whatever it was called. Uh, uh, Sonetta and Polite came down and um, Polite asked a question about the rape thing and young women. And we know now we know why he asked that question. And we told him, you know, he asked us a, a legit question and we gave him a legit answer based upon studying and applying knowledge and acumen. And uh, he caught he got caught up in his emotion emotions. Now recently, um, Sarnetta said the number one camp out there, he considered, now ISUPK, they're always, all, all Sarnetta had to do is, you know, call uh, Captain Tazariak or General Yohan or any of them and they'll like, yeah, we'll be, I'll be over there, I'll come to the house, whatever. Now, what wouldn't it make sense that he would say the number one camp out there is the ISUPK because they're at his call, they're a phone call away? As many times as Captain Tazaria goes over there, he, you know, he goes to the house, he's been to the house a couple of times. They've been on the street together. Wouldn't would it make sense for him to say ISUPK is the number one camp? No. He said the number one, the, the camp that he hates the most. He, at one time, he said the worst camp out there is GMS. He said the number one camp, because they apply the scriptures and they go into uh, words and Hebrew and Greek and maps and historical uh, documentation. He said the number, and then he had what? He had, I think he had IS, ISUPK, Sakari, and um, GMS. And I believe he had ISUPK second to GMS. You know, Where, what's this guy, this boxer name? Um, uh, second and none. Michael Nunn, great boxer, great boxer. He got knocked out by um, James Tony because he was goofing around. He's beating James Tony. James Tony hit him and knocked his ass out. But Michael Nunn, I believe it's Michael Nunn. Y'all remember him, y'all boxing heads. He, his nickname was second to none. So GMS, according to Sarnetta, GMS is second to none. Meaning if we're the second, there's nobody before us, so we're really the first. So at first, and you can watch it, go to Vocab, Vocab's page. I believe it's on Vocab's page. I was watching it the other day. Matter of fact, about a week and a half ago, and he made the statement, he, um, he said that, uh, he said, you got GMS is number one. I think he said the top five, but it was the top one came down to the top three. He said GMS is number one, ISU PK is number two, and Sakari is number three. He said, no, 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 no. He said GMS is number one, Sakari is number two, and ISU PK is number three. I forget the other two, other five. Why did he say that? When we cursed him out 
he don't like us, he can't stand us. Why would he say that? Because he's, he sees that we go into the dictionary, we go into history, we go into prophecy, then we go into the secular history to back up the prophecy. You can't understand the mystery if you don't understand the history. That's one of our sayings. Um, and then he said, and then he mentioned the thing about the rape thing. He said that they were right on the rape thing. Now, does it mean that we go out and rape? Do we advocate that you go out and rape? Oh, hell no. In the kingdom, are we going to rape? No, we won't have to. Because all Israelite men will be superstars. They're going to have to beat women off with a stick. Okay? You don't got to go out and hunt. Look, there ain't going to be no ugly Israelite men out there. And no ugly Israelite. There ain't going to be no fat. Can you imagine? There ain't going to be no fat people among Israel. We're going to have the six-pack, the eight-pack, the ten-pack. Whatever you want, we're going to be in perfect shape for, at all times. And we don't got to go to the gym or nothing like that. Can you imagine our bodies are going to be, you ain't going to be, you ain't going to see no fat Israelites, man. You know? You ain't going to see no Israelites walking with a damn cane or a walker or in a fucking wheelchair. There ain't going to be no hospitals in, in, in the kingdom, in, in the earthly kingdom. Because we'll have the power to heal people. So anyway, why would Sarnetta say that? Because Sarnetta checks us out and he sees, he says, well, they're going into the document. They're going into this. They're going into history. And the reason why we said what we said about the R-A-P-E, which people get emotional even if you say the word. That's why I spelled it. Because this guy is caught up in his emotion and he got his congregation caught up in, in emotions. So let's, let's listen to a little bit more. Get your house in order, marriage at a rapture page, and you're confused. Okay, so what, what is a marriageable age? Let's, let's take the RAP, R-A-P-E out of the whole, the whole, uh, situation. Let's push that out to the side. What age can, in Israel, in the ancient world, whatever in the kingdom, what age, what age can an Israelite man marry an Israelite woman? What age do they have to be in? Give me the scripture. Give me the scripture. And this goes to all you Israelites out there. Let's listen, let's listen on. Give me the scripture proverb by evil men. So what is an evil man? Oh, the scripture. Oh, the scripture. That's not a word. I didn't even know Apostle Gabbard was going to mention those two words, sound and logical. Didn't I go through that? Didn't I go through the word 
Didn't I cover the word logical? Didn't I go to, into the meaning of the word logical? Didn't I go into the meaning of the word sound scripturally in the scriptures? I didn't know Apostle Gabar was going to say that. And he definitely is a, a caught up in his emotions. He's definitely caught up in his emotions. Understand not judgment. Give me that. That's Even though they didn't consummate the marriage. In 
New York, New York State. And they just recently changed the law a couple of years back. I don't know, 2014, 2016. The, the law stated that you can marry a woman at the age of 14. At the age of 14, that was this New York State law. Basically, this is just a He is supposed to be with her for life. He can't just grab her, do what he has to do, and put her away. So that causes her to commit adultery. That's his influence. This is the Apostle Paul spoke about that. And what you do is that then the man is laid. This thing shall be the first wife of him. All the things that the father has to compensate is this big story. Anyway, I urge you to watch the rest of this video on um, Daily Edification 4. Uh, so the title is, So What is a Marriageable Age? In ancient Israel, Elder Bishop Nathaniel, do you even know? And the answer is no, he doesn't know. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.